All right, I think we're live. Excellent. All right, so what I got going on today is a little bit of a live mixing session. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is go over some old Loafer's Glory material. We're really close to actually being able to release some sort of album since the reunion. I wanted to have it done before that. It just didn't come together. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, um, I'm running through some old material. One of the last songs that I need to do to really do a lot of work on is um, a song called The Last Song. Uh, so anyways, so what I've basically done is just bring it over from an old session that we'd actually recorded back in, gosh, 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. I brought that in, stupid dog. You guys can hear that. <laughs> anyways, so we had gone to the Western Carolina University uh, new recording studio there. <laughs> Funny story, I think they actually use a broadcast board instead of a, uh, an audio board. But So we uh, went there to record uh, our very last recording as a band before we kind of went our separate ways. Uh, Michael Cannon was the engineer for that session, and he gave us a copy of the CD with all the, um, uh, the sessions on it. Now, luckily, those sessions were Pro Tools sessions, so I can easily bring it back into my own Pro Tools rig. How many years later? 16 years later, if it was recorded in 2014, uh, 20, uh, 2004. So yeah, 16 years later, I can come in and open up the session just as you see it here. So I've got all my tracks here. And these are pretty much unmolested from the day that they were recorded in that studio. So I didn't get just the stems. I got the entire multi-section so that I could work on it later whenever and that's exactly what I've done over the years I've practiced with these old tracks and um, tried to get better at the game <laughs> uh, the mixing and recording and overdub game anyways so let's see here so like I said this is a song called the last song uh, I'm gonna play it through once just so you can hear it and some of these multi tracks actually have some funny stuff around them um, this one, I don't think it really has any extra stuff, but in some of these you can hear us talking in the background and just making jokes or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this particular track has anything. Maybe. What's this? Oh, that's just me. So I think Keith or uh, Matt had a loose connection on his guitar and it was creating that terrible, terrible uh, sound. Anyway, so we actually ended up using that in the original recording release or yeah, the original release that we did, we actually ended up using that terrible sound. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to play through it once here to uh, let you hear it. And then we'll move on. Not mixed at all. And 
I think that's enough of that. <laughs> you can get an idea. It's an angry song. It's a loud, angry song that hasn't been mixed at all. You can't hear the vocals. The drums are just out of whack. You can't... There's no balance to them. The guitars. That's all you hear. <laughs> because we have how many tracks of guitars here? We, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, blah, 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 blah. So, a lot. <laughs> we have four vocal overdubs. Um, hell, we have two bass tracks. Um, I think one of these is a direct line. One of these is a is a cabinet. Let me actually save that. All right. So let's listen to the bass. Where are we at here? Basse guitare. Uh, here we go. <laughs> One of those is, yeah, oh, here. Oh, hear that weird phasing? That's kind of cool, actually. I like that. What's going on here as far as the wave? Are we off? Yeah, we're off a little bit. That's why there's a little delay. Let's, uh, let's scoot you over. Actually, let's scoot you back. Yeah, there we go. Now we're a little more aligned. Boop. How do we sound now? Still not great. So we'll be using one or the other for this. Which is fine, which is what I normally do. Unless he's playing like a slap bass and then I actually just split the same track and concentrate one track for bass, one track for treble. So let's start off with the uh, with the Drumies. So we'll mute everything else. We'll mute everything else. Why don't we have the drums? Uh, because it's no. Uh, um. <laughs> I am SMRT. There we go. So let's find a loop that we can work with. We'll go up here. And we'll probably end up time aligning these as well. That's not a bad kick drum sound. <laughs> well, that's why I've already sample replaced it. Let's take a look at the kick drum. Mm, select an area here. That'll work. Let's hear it without the trigger. That's why I sample replaced it. Okay, so for this, I think I'm just going to, for our purposes here, I'm just going to use the the track that's already there instead of sample replacing. Ah, that's some good show. So let's see what we've got. So we're running it through my old standby here, the old Slate Virtual Rack. I love this thing. And just recently, they... Um, they released a new compressor, the LA-2A compressor. Let's see where I just saw it. Maybe I didn't. It's on here, I promise. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there it is. FG-2A. So it's LA-2A. It's an old limiter. Uh, sounds great on 
particular things. So let's see what we can do to doctor up this kick. So I'm gonna, well, I could have done that an easier way. So. so right now we've got a lot of bleed. Let's take care of that. This is one of the best gates ever. So right now it's getting a lot of that attack. We've getting, we're getting a little bit of the snare bleed, but that's okay. As long as I can get rid of all of that stuff. So we got a lot of attack. That's fine. Um, I would rather to have a little bit of the lower information. Uh, the lower frequency information, but that's fine. We'll work around it. So let's go ahead and put it through our ringer or console emulator. I'm going to throw it into an API console. Give it a little bit of ump. Okay. We'll bring back some of that low frequency information in a moment. out there playing all right so we've got our virtual console we've got our preamp over here to kind of heat things up a little bit let's go ahead and now that we've gotten a, a little bit of that bleed out of the way I'll try to throw it through a compressor my favorite the distressor okay where's our kick here we go. Natural, aggressive, fattener. Let's make punchy and tight. So pushing it. I'm going to take a look at our VU unit. Pushing it a little. Not too shabby. So uh, the peak is high, but that's fine. That's exactly where I want it to be. We're going to give it a high pass. so that we can retain a little bit of that lower information while controlling the highs. Give it a little bit of a harmonic here. Yes. Ah. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's try to EQ that sound a little bit. I think I'm going to use a different EQ. So I think that's about it. Okay, so that's a bit of our lower end. We're going to work on our high end. One moment. Okay, I'm going to open up another mix rack here. Now we're pretty much going to do the same thing except concentrate on the highs. So, and actually before that, another gate. So turn that off. And to get an idea, so let me do something real quick. So it has a release on here for the uh, the compressor. What we're going to do is find out exactly how long the attack and the release are on these. So our attack is pretty quick. It's a transient item. It's a it's a kick drum, right? So the peak of our wave, let's say around here. Let's change this to say. There we go. 
So it's around, gosh, it's, it's not long at all. So less than, okay, so about six milliseconds, five milliseconds. So that's fine. Let's see how long our, <laughs> what's he going on about? So we're measuring out here, oh gosh, less than, a mm, hundred milliseconds, probably go, or sorry, 800 milliseconds. So that's kind of what we use to judge what kind of release time to put on the compressor. So let's come back here, let's get our original selection. So let's customize both of these. So our release, to get the entire resonance, we can put it at around 758 milliseconds. Actually, I take that back, it was around 80. So we can get our entire kick drum attack and do our best to clean out everything else. We'll do a hybrid on that. So our attack. Okay. That works. So we've got all of our attack and all of our release. Let's do the same thing over here. Which it already is. I mean, I was giving it a little bit more leeway. Okay. So we've got that. If we come and listen to all of it together. So not bad. We've got all that attack. We don't really have the resonance, which is, you know, what we want. Not a bad sounding kick drum. Uh, I w there's a couple things I would have done differently had I had the opportunity to go back and uh, recapture that kick drum. Of course, I can't unless I have a DeLorean. I don't have a DeLorean, so we're going to move on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and EQ the rest of this kick. Error. There we go. All right. Run it through the API again, give it a little bit of drive. What that does is just harmonically enrich the track. So it's adding harmonics that a console would normally put in there. That's why everybody says, oh, analog sounds so good. Well, analog has these components that the electronic signals run through, and it enriches that sound by uh, embedding, well, not embedding, bringing out those harmonics that you find naturally in music. So we'll move on. I'm going to tame that just a little bit. It's peaking a little high for me. All right. I'm going to run it through our preamp, which I'm using Hollywood. Uh, honestly, there's a very subtle difference between the Hollywood, the London, and the New York. I just happen to like Hollywood because it's Hollywood. Console. We're going to push it a little bit, too. So, and here's what it sounds like if you push the preamp a little too hard. You start hearing that circuitry distorting because it's being overloaded. So it imparts uh, something like like a distorted guitar. You're you're pushing the tubes to the point of saturation. So it's going to start sounding a little staticky if you push it too hard. So this isn't bad though. So we're going to put a little bit of a high pass in. Not much. I just want to get rid of a, a lot of growl. Okay. And then I'm going to put it through our distressor once more because I like what it does. We're going to go punchy and tight again. I'm going to push it. I want to see a little bit of this total harmonic distortion just on the peaks. Nothing crazy. I'm going to pull back the overall output to kind of match our other kick. Ooh, a little too hot. Pull back. 
All right. So we've got both of these going. Now, our next step, I need to EQ. So I've got one focused on the, the lower frequencies, one focused on the higher. This is obviously the external mic, which I believe was an SM57. And I believe this was the internal, which was a beta 52. Most, uh, they're both sure mics. Uh, one, the 57 is used, like Tom Petty used it for a vocal microphone. You'll see it on like snare <coughs> and um, gosh, just a whole lot of things. Guitar cabs. Um, however, it's, it's not as good as the Beta 52 so far as capturing a nice kick drum. Uh, the Beta 52 has a nice little notch in there about mid frequency to get a really good attack sound, but it also captures lower frequencies really well too. So let me, let me go ahead and put the 57 in here. All right, so let's take a look at our EQ. So this is what the kick drum looks like. A lot of low end frequency here, or uh, energy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at that. So one thing I really like about the FabFilter Pro Q3 is that you can hover over this bottom area here and it'll show you all this information. Uh, you've got your peaks here, which it outlines, and you can focus on those or you can cut from those depending on what kind of mixing you're going for. So this is 153. This is good energy here. I like this. So we're going to accentuate that just a touch. However, we're going to cut things down below it. Because too much of that low frequency and it, it triggers your, um, your mix bus compressor and pretty much dominates the mix. We don't want that. All right, so we've got some other frequencies here. However, I'm going to start cutting from the high end here. It's about five... 5 dB up here. There's not much else that we need to worry about. So we've got our nice low end thump. I don't like to add too much because it adds some weird harmonics if you do, and it can sound really uh, unnatural. So we'll peak it if I can get about 2 dB. No, close. To, hey, right on the dot. All right, so there's that. So we've got that low end sound. Now we're going to look at the high end. Okay, so first, right off the bat, we're going to cut the frequencies that we added. There we go, about 120 or so. Man, this thing's sensitive. All right, there we go. We're going to cut that, so high pass filter. Now we're going to look for our peaks up here. So a good attack. It really depends on the drum. What I like to do, let's see, add a little spike here. See where the attack is. So I'm gonna listen. Right about 900 hertz, I think. I could be a little off. It's it's kind of hard to hear right now. And we're also going to add just an overall lift. There we go. Now the thing is, we're not going to use too much of this particular kick. We're just wanting enough to get a good attack. Let's see what it sounds like with the rest of the mix now. All right, I can live with that kick drum for right now. I might, I might end up changing that a little bit later, but for right now that does perfectly. 
good attack. It's got some good low wind. Um, if you were to listen to it on headphones, you'd have a nice thump to it. All right. So let's move on to the snare. Then on the snare, I'm pretty sure was a 57. There's no reason to really stray from that unless you go with like a Sennheiser uh, 441 or something like that. Uh, even then, I don't think it produces nearly the good uh, capture as a 57. So as you can see, I triggered that as well. However, that's going to change. We're going to use what we have so let's get a nice little loop. So this is with the trigger. I'm taking the trigger out. Still not a bad capture, so we'll use that. I think I used trigger before because I was just in a hurry. I wanted to hear what it sounded like. So yeah, we're going to go with that. Let's pull out. That's not what I wanted. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start from scratch here, blank, and we're going to do what we've been doing. We're going to start with our gate. Again, <coughs> this is the Sleek uh, VMR gate, which is by far one of the best gates I've heard uh, as far as software. Hell, even hardware. This does a really good job. It looks ahead. It figures out how it needs to gate. It just does an amazing job. So we're going to de-bleed just a little. However, we still depend on a bit of the snare to get our hi-hat sound, which Richie uses quite a bit in this song. So I don't want to get rid of it completely. That's going to be the trick. And actually... While we have it here, let's take a look at our, or take a listen to our uh, overheads. If they capture enough of the hi-hat, then I can just keep the attack of my snare. Which, wow, that gets rid of almost everything. All right, so let's listen. All right, there's a lot of hi-hat in the overhead, so I think we can probably do without it in the snare drum mic. Yeah, not bad. So right now we've got a pretty dry snare here. We'll probably end up adding some reverb to it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Drum verb is where we set. All right. So we've got our snare drum here. Wow, that is... That is ridiculous. All right, let's go ahead and um, add some flavor to it. I'm going to take it to Flavor Town. Now, the thing with snare is that we can push it. Snare drum is basically a snapshot of white noise in a transient form. So we can push it. We can add this, this uh, overdrive. Let's see what it sounds like. going to go with that. We're just kissing that light. Just adding enough. Let's give it a little bit of flavor. Let's keep going. Yes, distressor. Alright, snare. Let's give it some... Do we want punch? We'll start here. We'll work around. Oh, yes. Oh, Lord, that's sexy. Okay, yeah, that's where we want to be. Let's see, let's see what it sounds like with the kick. All right, I can dig it. Let's go ahead and throw these through the uh, the reverb. So we're going to bus it to our 
drum to or drum bus. Okay, this was reverb. Okay, so we're going to keep things straight here. Drum, verb. There we go. Okay. All right. Follow main fader. Uh, yeah, all that is fine. Except we don't want to throw it. Here we go. Go do it all pre fader. Because we don't want the, really the kick drum going into the verb too much. Um, I'll address that, adjust that to flavor later. So another plugin, uh, Slate Digital. Is it Slate? Liquid Sonic. Ah, yes. Lustrous Plates. This is an awesome reverb plugin. And it, it comes with that Slate plugin bundle. So I've been using it a lot. Bright ambience, no. Soft room, tight drums. Let's go with a soft room for now. Okay, 100% wet. Let's look at our EQ. I'll we'll pull up that low cut. Okay, let's see what she sounds like with some verbiage. Ain't too shabby. All right, we're running on 32 minutes. We'll keep going. All right, let's take a look at our overheads. Okay, so we're gonna just work with, let's do this. We're gonna work with one overhead at a time. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna mirror whatever effects we put on here. In fact, I may just leave what I already have on the VMR. Which is nothing, kids! <laughs> All right, so let's do this. We got, we, we've got we already got our selection that we're working with, so. Mm, there we go. So very quiet, but that's on that's on purpose. information there. Okay. Now, I kind of run this through a bit of a high pass. Uh, however, let's see here. Can I reload that? I run this through a bit of a high pass because I want to get, try to get rid of a lot of the low end information, but I don't want to get rid of all of it. Uh, the reason for that is I already have a lot going on the lower spectrum. Uh, these are the overheads. I need to concentrate on the cymbals, the hi-hats, uh, even a little bit of the snare drum. I mean, all that's going to bleed through anyway, so I've got to treat the whole thing as one big instrument, which it is. It's several smaller instruments composing one giant instrument. <coughs> so no gate on it, I don't think. Um, I have before in the past. It's not, not great. Uh, just to see what we get. So yeah, most of these presets are for other parts of the instrument anyways. So we're going to go with that. Uh, we are going to compress it a little bit, however. So let's see. I always start with the uh, the presets and then work uh, work around with it. So let's see what we got. So this is without it, and then with. It's a subtle difference, but it does help in the overall mix. So we're going to pull that up a little bit. Back. There we go. We're going to leave that probably as it is. I don't really want to 
muddy it up too much. Quite a bit of sizzle there anyways so we're going to work with that we'll leave that as it is however we're going to copy that and pull it over to the other side we're going to i need to <laughs> all right we're going to pan these and we're going to set them together so i grouped them together so whatever i do to one happens to the other so we're going to adjust our levels now probably going to adjust those a bit more once we get into the mix a little bit more I start adding the bass guitar the uh, the other guitars the vocals see how the um, the overheads sit with that because how you balance those is how the drums are perceived overall if your uh, overheads are a little too high your drums are going to probably seem kind of tinny and not really have a lot of um, uh, rhythmic value to it other than the um, the pace at which you hit the hi-hat All right, so we'll move on. Uh, we've got those two. We've got room mics that are uh, next. And what I find is when you add room mics, you add more body to the drums. And I will show you in just a moment. Let's see. Let's go ahead and throw drum reverb over here. Reverb kind of mellows out those uh, th that high end. All right, so let's take a listen to the drum room or the room mics, which I think the room mics might be capturing some of the bass guitar, if I remember right. So let's take a listen. Actually, first, we're going to group these. Room. Okay, there we go. Unselect that for now. We got it straight up the middle. What do we have on the VMR? Nothing. Okay, so this is what you hear. So yeah, it didn't really get any of the bass guitar. We must have isolated the bass. So all we're going to do is kind of compress the room mic. And all this is, is literally just a mic out in the middle of the room there to capture how the drum sound waves bounce off of the uh, the walls. Which, this wasn't a bad control room. It was nice. It had a high ceiling. Uh, the walls were reflective. So it got a pretty good capture. I can't complain about that. Let's see what it sounds like with the rest of the instrument. So we're going to start these down here. This is the direct mic. 
These are the direct mics. Right about there is a sweet spot. Did you hear it when it came up? I'm gonna do it again. It has a weird ability to add this 3D image, especially if you're listening on headphones or anything, which I am. Um, it adds this uncanny ability to add a, a sound stage to it that you didn't have before. Oh man, I really need to... I'm working from um, <laughs> a shared folder, so the guys from the uh, band can, can add what multi-tracks they need to. Anyways, so there's the drum room. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Now, the secret weapon. <laughs> uh, we do not need to put that through the verb because it already is its own reverb, so to speak. However, I am adding, I am adding a parallel compressor, so a PC. And if you've never messed with parallel compressors, these are a lot of fun. We gotta keep these all the same same color iteration. There we go. Just so we can know where we're at. <laughs> Alright, one of my favorite uh compressors for this particular job, even though there's several that will do a great job. Oh jeez. H comp, there we go. It's waves. So this thing does a really good job. Um, I've done, I've tried the distressor for it. it. It works okay. There's also another slate plugin called, um, uh, monster compressor, which also does a pretty good job. So we might, uh, you know, compare those. Let's see. What time is it? Okay. 1030. I'm good. All right. So we're going to put all this into the compressor. We're going to go ahead and set a little bit of punch. We're going to set our ratio all the way up because we're slamming it. This is the whole reason why we're using this. And uh, we'll adjust our threshold as we need. So here we go. All right. So we've got our threshold set. <clears throat> now listen to what it does to the overall drums. I may need to turn down the, uh, the output here. All right, here we go. Oh, we've got some weird phasing going on. What's going on here? Do we have... Delay compensation. Yep, that wasn't enabled. Okay, so we'll try it again. So you can probably hear that the parallel compression does a, a few things here. So right off the bat, a lot of the sounds that were kind of getting buried before are coming to the forefront now. Uh, namely, some of the nuances of the kick drum. You could hear the room mics and overheads really come into their own. So it really does a lot. It kind of it squishes the entire instrument into something louder and with a lot more oomph to it, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Okay. So we'll work with that. Uh, let's see what it sounds like with 
one of the bass guitars. Okay, not too bad. And then one of the very last things I do to all of this is run it through my tape machine. So tape machine, the whole, you remember what I said earlier about uh, the analog components adding uh, harmonics to the, uh, to the electronic, uh, electrical signal that was running through the board. This is the exact same thing. So, however, instead of electronic components like capacitors, resistors, all that, they add a natural harmonic. This adds tape harmonics so it's a little different and uh, but to not get into the weeds on this too much it adds a different flavor of harmonics and the effect is very subtle and it can entirely be replicated digitally i don't need a freaking four thousand dollar multi-track system to get that sound despite what all the hipsters say I used to be one of those hipsters. I was like, analog all the way. There's there's no way to get that sound. There absolutely is a way to get that sound. So we can mix entirely in the box without it ever seeing a piece of real tape, which I've worked with real tape before. I do know the difference. Um, we can easily emulate it with this, or Waves makes one. Universal Audio makes one. So we're just going to use this. So we're going to set all these levels. Alright, there we go. So I just added tape all across the drums and on the drum bus. To emulate all that tracking to tape. So that's what we have so far. We have any notifications? Nope. Alright. So we'll keep going. Um, I'm probably going to call it at the end of this bass uh, tracking and I'll resume again later. <clears throat> so let's take a listen to what we have without any extra plugins. <laughs> So the bass guitar stands on its own, uh, however I do want to run it through Positive Grid's bias amp. And all this is going to do is, since this is a direct line, I'm going to emulate uh, the signal going through a bass amp. Uh, skip for now. So one of my favorites that they have is uh, the Galleon Kruger. Galleon Kruger 800. They have others here. Um, Let's see, can I show you? So they've got um, an orange amp, uh, looks like a Fender there, and um, I think a 
miss a bogey. I'd need to look at it closer. So, as I mentioned, I like the Galleon Kruger, so we're going to use that. If we listen to it just by itself. So that's what the emulator sounds like. Let's listen to just the track by itself without the emulator. Not too bad. There's a lot of upper range that's in here. However, the, the bass is upper range. It takes up a lot of frequency, or it resides within a frequency that you that's used quite a bit in this song. So I wanted to concentrate on more the lower end, which is why I ran it through the Galleon. Galle Galleon. GK. Go away. However, I do want to retain a lot of that attack, so we're going to keep the gain up. Now, Keith likes to use a bass with a lot of tone in it, so it captures a lot of that attack and a lot of string noise. So we can tame that a bit later. However, uh, for right now, this sits pretty fine, pretty well within the, uh, the mix so far. So let's take a listen. So, and I'm really glad that I concentrated uh, a bit on the attack on the bass because the bass guitar and the kick are a lot of times taking up the same frequency uh, real estate. So let's sculpt it out a bit. Now this one I have already put through a bit of an emulator on here, so I do want to run it through the preamp because that's what we've been doing. <laughs> like with the drums. So not too bad. I think that's where I'll leave it for today. So uh, let's see. Overall, we've yeah we haven't done too much. Just gotten through the drums. So you can see how this can take quite a while to mix a whole song. Um, so we've got our parallel compressor, our kick, drums. We've got our bass guitar here. Excellent. So let's go ahead and hide this one. We don't need this one in, in the way while we're doing this. Okay, so next time we'll take a look at the guitars. So, guitars during that time sound like this. So, 
sounds a bit hollow right now because we've treated the lower end in the uh, the rhythm section. So the guitars sound like they need a little bit of work. Sounds like there might be some phasing going on, so we're probably going to just use one microphone from each take. I think right now we have two set up, maybe even three. Oh yeah, look at that. A, B, C, D. Are these all the same? God, tell me no. Oh God, it. Yeah. Two amps, two mics each. If I remember right, it was my JCM Marshall JCM 900 and then a carbon carbon tube amp. I can't even remember the model. So that's where I will leave things for today. We will resume maybe tomorrow, maybe next weekend. I don't know. Anyways, this is the last song, uh, the name of it, uh, for the band I was in, Lover's Glory. We're trying to finish things up to release a full album. Hopefully this year. It was supposed to happen last year for the in time for the reunion. However, we're all working remotely. Even even then we were working remotely because none of us lived near anyone else. And we were having to do a lot of online collaboration. So same thing with this. I don't think I'll need to do any overdubs for this, but if I do, I'll try to record that as well. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in if you stopped by. And um, I'll try to do this again soon. Um, yeah, look out for the uh, rest of the music. Uh, I might do more online mix sessions, depending on if it, anybody like this. And um, I'll be sure to let folks know when uh, when the uh, material is released. So I'll probably be Bandcamp. I think that's probably the easiest for a lot of folks. Or on my label, I don't know. Rowan Audio Works. So anyways, I'll see you next time. Thanks for uh, stopping by if you did check it out. So take care. Bye.